Good evening. I'd like to welcome each of you to the March 19, 2018 meeting of the Wilson County Board of Education meeting. Um, members of the board, the chair is open for an approval of the agenda. Madam Chair, Mrs. Powell, I move to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting of March 19, 2018. It has been moved and properly seconded that the agenda for March 19, 2018 be approved. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Mrs. Barnes, I'll ask if you would uh, lead the board and the audience in the Pledge of Allegiance to be followed by a moment of silence. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that we are absent a member um, tonight. Mr. Mercer is under the weather and will not be joining us. Um, now we call for the approval of the minutes of February 19th, 2018 meeting. Um, I do want to have a correction made um, or an insertion into the minutes. Mrs. Corson would note that on page five of the minutes, I think that there needs to be an insertion um, under that last sentence, the motion passed unanimously in the next paragraph that indicates that Vice Chairman Mercer mm -hmm. uh, returned the meeting to the board chair for continuation. The minutes reflected earlier that I had turned the, minute, the meeting over to Mr. Mercer for the purpose of uh, motions from the Instructional Services Committee, uh, but it does not reflect that the meeting returned back to the chair. You're at the top of the page? Yes, sir. Okay, at the end of the first paragraph. The top of the page. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, Ms. Barnes, I move that we approve the regular board meeting minutes of February 19th with the necessary insertion. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the minutes of February 19, 2018 with the so stated insertion. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of <coughs> aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Mrs. Barnes, would you assist Dr. Mills in our good news presentation, please? Board members, audience members, I'd like to um, recognize our students who have been selected to attend Governor's School. And so uh, from Fike High School, if these students would come forward, Kiefer Snedeker, Chibi Uwakwe, Miles Cyrus, and Lily Quinn. These students are from Fike. Okay, from Hunt, Emma Fassoon. Did I get it right? She's playing soccer. Fast She's playing soccer. Okay. Tell her I apologize. Emma Bennett and from Wilson Early College Academy, Chloe Leon. Let me tell you a little bit about these special students that are in front of you tonight. We want to recognize these students for their selection to attend Governor's School. <laughs> Which, <laughs> which is a five and a half week summer residential program for intellectually gifted high school students. The program integrates academic disciplines, the arts, and unique courses. We are very proud of them. And special congratulations to Chloe because she's the first student in WECA's history to be selected. Yes. 
Yeah. 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 Let me tell you a little bit about their areas of focus. So Kiefer is attending for math, Chibi is for Spanish, Miles and Lily are for social science, Emma is for natural science, um, that's not, not with us tonight. Emma, who is with us, is for Soprano 2, and Chloe's for English. Mm -hmm. So congratulations for your selection. I, thought, I think I saw the principals, Mr. St. Clair, Mr. Dahl, and uh, Mr. Johnson here were recognizing uh, your celebration as well. Okay. <laughs> Parents, if you want to get a picture, now would be a good time as soon as Ms. Barnes hands out these awards. <laughs> Let's get a picture, and then, then students, you can uh, introduce your family, start with you, or anyone you'd like to introduce. Keith, will you start us off? Uh, my dad's with me. Okay. <laughs> I have it over here. All right. <laughs> Miles. My mom's in the audience. My mom's in the audience. Okay. My mom and dad right now. My mom's taking a picture. There you go. There you go. Well, congratulations. Well, they're close to you. That shirt. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to recognize um, some special folks in the audience, too. We want to recognize Bettingfield High School Principal F.T. Franks, Spate Middle Principal Valerie Budd, and Vincent Bonham Elementary Principal Daniel Barnes, and they are our newest group of administrators to complete the Distinguished Leadership in Practice, or DLP. If they would come forward. <laughs> Students modeled all of it for you. Let me tell you a little bit about the DLP program. This is a very rigorous year-long program through the North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association. It allows administrators to grow their leadership skills through enriching activities and assignments. I actually hear it's just as tough as their master's program. I know this has been a great experience for them and I appreciate all they do each day and I was proud to attend their graduation and see them be recognized on behalf of themselves and our district. So congratulations. Tonight for character education, I'd like to recognize Hannah Mosey, an eighth grader at Elm City Middle School. Hannah here. I thought I saw her. Hannah's being recognized for responsibility. Stand right here. Let me tell you a little bit about Hannah. Hannah does very well in her classes at Elm City Middle, and she's also a talented athlete. She plays basketball, cross country, soccer, and volleyball. That's about everything, isn't it? <laughs> Tonight, we want to recognize her for speaking at the recent Celebration of Girls and Women in Sports Day at Barton College. She was our Wilson County Schools representative, and she spoke about the value of particip participating in sports, which I think she knows a little bit about since she's involved in four sports. <laughs> we are very proud of her accomplishments and for representing us so well. Her mom, Joy, is a teacher assistant at Lucama. I think your coach, Mr. Brent Pearson, nominated for, uh, you for the award. He's here, and I see your principal, Mr. Pope, here as well. So congratulations. We're very proud of you. She also gets a gift card from Schwartz and Shaw. Thank you for sponsoring us. That's all for tonight. We're moving. Always such wonderful good news. And thank you so much. And congratulations to all of our um, Governor School attendees. We know you'll do us proud. Under the Chairman's report, right, this calendar time. 
again, we always thank Chick-fil-A for partnering with us with the Smart Cookies. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Powell for attending Smart Cookies at Stantonsburg on February the 28th. Um, we had to reschedule the Smart Cookies for Vic Elementary. It's now on for March the 21st. Mrs. Barnes, thank you for attending. And uh, we do need a volunteer for April the 10th at 2 o'clock at New Hope. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Barnes. Um, members of the board, please mark your calendar. We're early in, in this announcement, but um, we are invited to the, and the students, the seniors, are invited to take part in the 23rd Annual Baccalaureate Program to honor high school graduates. This program is sponsored by Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and the program is scheduled for Sunday, June the 3rd, 2018, at 4 p.m. Beddingfield High School, and it is open to all graduating seniors in Wilson County. And we thank them for continuing um, that service uh, for the students. Um, on Wednesday, there was a day of remembrance that our students observed in recognition and honor of the tragedy, um, in recognition of the lives that were lost in the tragedy in uh, Florida. And I understand that went off very well. There was a nice article in the Wilson Times. Uh, it focused on Hunt, but it did, this event did occur at all three of our high schools. Uh, our early colleges were on uh, spring break, and they are hosting their own programs uh, this week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, the blood drive at Fight continues to be an outstanding event, the largest blood drive um, in the nation from high schools, sponsored by high schools, and uh, I don't know what the final total is, but thank you to the faculty, staff, and students at FIKE for putting on that event once again. But most of all, thank you to the community for the continued support of this very worthwhile project because lives are saved with each blood donation. We had our uh, job fair this past Saturday. I'm sure Dr. Mills will address that, um, if I'm not mistaken, in his mm -hmm. remarks. Um, so we are hopeful that um, we get good results out of that. Um, gentlemen's Agreement had a wonderful uh, trip to Atlanta. This is their, uh, culminating, their major culminating event. And I, I heard comments that it was most enjoyable. Um, I think it's a wonderful learning opportunity, as always, for those young men. And we thank the chaperones and the donors who uh, continue to support that program. Hats off to the Darden Middle School Debate Club for their showing at the Model UN Summit that was recently held at UNC. Um, we thank our student volunteers, the staff, faculty, the community, for the wonderful senior senior prom that was recently held. And that seems to be a highlight within the community. And uh, it is so awesome that our students get a chance to interact with the elders in the community. And um, we thank uh, everyone for the effort that went into that um, event. Before we convene again, we will be having spring break which I think families, students, teachers, staff, everybody is looking forward to. And I hope that the weather cooperates. You know, we've been having, hearing snow yet again. So I hope there are no, no nor'easters that affect us, but uh, we wish everybody a safe and enjoyable spring break. And that concludes the chairman's report. Madam Chair, board members, um, since our last board meeting, our school level teachers of the year had a great time at the NCAT session. That uh, was March 5th through the 9th. And we're glad that they were able to uh, be a part of that PD professional development and we're grateful to the Wilson Education Partnership for covering the costs. I did get another email with a list of demands from them this year when they return. Um, I think this year they wanted cats and dogs in their classrooms. 
from what they'd seen at Ocracoke. I told them that the email was eaten by the computer, so I couldn't really respond. <laughs> they also sent pictures as well. So they had a really great week. It was, they sent lots of pictures during the week. Um, to piggyback on what Dr. Fitch was talking about with the gentleman's agreement, we had 58 students that went to Atlanta on March 6th. They had a 14-hour whirlwind tour in the rain, I believe. Um, stops at Martin Luther King Jr. Center, World of Coca-Cola, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and some other sites along Sweet Auburn Avenue. I think that was a great trip, so thanks to the liaisons and Mr. Davis and Mr. Barnes for um, being a part of that and all the chaperones as well. We did have another inclement weather event. It was a two-hour delay on March 13th. Uh, always exciting and fun. Hopefully this week will be over and then we can move about spring and we won't have to talk about that anymore. Um, so we're, we're fingers crossed for that. Um, ditto again, uh, Dr. Fitch talking about our assembly across the district for our day of remembrance for the uh, school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Um, the early colleges were on spring break when we had that um, assembly. So Watt held its assemblies today and WEC is scheduled for tomorrow at 1030 and it will be outside in the courtyard. So the weather is like they're predicting. You may want to plan for that. Uh, our second graders are still participating in swimming lessons. We want to thank the YMCA and the REC for partnering with us to provide that really important life skill. Um, they make a lot of progress in that week's time. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, some are kind of terrified at the beginning and then by the end they're having a ball and are real comfortable with the water. Um, we'll thank our staff members at the Y who are working with our students and all the volunteers and, and many of those volunteers are retired teachers. Uh, the WECA principal, Mr. Nelson Johnson, was out on spring break last week, so he volunteered. And so we kept him busy while he was out of school so he could be ready to go back to work. <laughs> the Middle School Battle of the Books competition was March 5th, and we want to congratulate the team from Elm City Middle. They won. They'll be proceeding to the regionals. And the elementary competi competition was this past Friday, and the team from Wells Elementary won, and they're on to regionals. So we support that literacy event for, for both those levels. Our teacher job fair was Saturday. It was a big event. We had about 75 attendees come out who were interested in joining Wilson County Schools. Uh, we got lots of feedback from the evaluation forms. Uh, I want to thank our Human Resources Department for all the work that organized it and for the Darden staff for letting us have, host it there. And all of our community partners who donated prizes and brewmasters for providing lunch for all the school-based staff. It was a really great event. I sent you some pics as it went through the day. Uh, the application period for reassignment opened March 1st. Uh, families meeting requirements can request to have a student attend a school outside their attendance zone. Forms are available at any of our schools, the central office, and on our website. The forms are due by June 1st. So the last uh, are just some upcoming events. Uh, in Harmony is March 22nd at 7 p.m. at Fike High School. This is a big fundraiser for Wilson Education Partnership where we celebrate the musical talents of our high school courses uh, in combination. Uh, this night will also include a performance by elementary students and an opportunity to view artwork from students in all grade levels and purchase selected pieces. Tickets are $12 and are available at the high schools or central office. That's the 22nd at 7. We have a budget work session scheduled for next week, 27th at 4 p.m. Our North, the North Carolina Symphony will perform for our fifth graders at Vic Elementary School on March the 29th at 10.30. May want to add that to your calendars. That's a, that's a great event. And finally, WP also has a fundraiser in April, on April 18th at noon, the Wilson Country Club. The event's called Lunch and Laughter. It will feature Wilson native and Wee School owner Vernon Mason, who we understand is pretty hilarious, speaks all over the country about facing adversity, working with difficult co-workers and handling stress. And tickets can be purchased through WP or at the Blissful Boutique or the Nook. And Madam Chair, that concludes all my items. All right, thank you so much. Um, now is the opportunity that the public has to uh, address the board. Each person is granted three minutes for his or her presentation. This portion of the meeting is for the board to hear matters of interest from the public. However, issues and concerns that address specific personnel or students should not be discussed during the public portion of the meeting, but may be presented in writing to the superintendent or the Board of Education. We have um, nine persons who have signed up to address the board. Um, eight of those are addressing Spanish immersion, um, and the other one is regarding Frederick Douglass. The first person who has signed up is Talicia Edwards um, regarding Spanish immersion.
Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to speak in favor of this program and on behalf of something that is extremely valuable to me, my family, parents, and children. I'm a bilingual member of the community of Wilson. I was born and raised and educated right here in Wilson County. Like many of my peers, I was taught in English um, for the first 10 years of uh, school. Foreign language was not introduced until I was in high school. Well, the option was appealing because it ultimately was one of the determining factors of graduation and college entry. Years later, I would go on to decide my career path, which afforded me the opportunity to become a nationally certified and licensed interpreter. I've been practicing <coughs> professionally for the, for the past 18 years. Now, it took me an additional five years to become fluent and then another three to gain my confidence. So, through college, my professors and teachers would always say, it's great to know the rules and grammar, but you will never really know the language until you have spent time with the natives learning their culture. So I did just that. I spent more years doing that. Now, had I had this skill set upon graduation, I'm sure that this process would have been a lot less bumpy. Now, as a parent of a bilingual child in this program, I have watched my son fearlessly join conversations with his peers and adults, carefully and accurately choosing nouns, conjugating verbs, I've watched him confidently read English and make those same grammatical connections in Spanish. Students in the Spanish Immersion Program are learning, and we, the parents, are watching as they embrace diverse cultures and practices with admiration and respect. Wilson County is so fortunate to have the chance to have their students educated by natives. Now, are these children here to gain college credit? No. But what they are gaining are lifelong skills and cultural exposure that will catapult them into the global world that they will take part of and eventually become leaders of. A growing number of industries and businesses take preferences to employing people who are able to communicate in other language. I can speak firsthand on this experience. When this, with this program, Wilson County is fostering highly employable, multicultural, and marketable students. As a parent, it is ultimately my responsibility to equip my child with the tools for the future. Now, as a community, it is ultimately all of our responsibility to equip our children with opportunities. The quality instruction of instruction that these children are receiving in this program supersedes anything that I was ever required to learn in my foreign language class during my whole four years of high school. At this juncture, the Spanish Immersion Program is one of the richest educational options for the public systems in Wilson County. We, the parents, are here, ready and willing to do what we can to preserve this program. It is immeasurably valuable to us and our children. And as a bilingual community member and Spanish Immersion parent, I am asking that you do not reduce this rich value of this program to a line item, as it is so much more. We're asking that you consider the value of this program and allow the children of Wilson County this academic opportunity. Thank you. Alice Freeman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Mills, the Frederick Douglass High School Alumni Association would like to take this opportunity to thank each of you for your role and support which has brought to fruition our journey of nearly 50 years. Your strength, courage, and integrity have re-energized our already strong commitment to education and community. So we simply want to say Thank you. But we also have a little note card that we share with special people, and you certainly are special people. Our president would like to approach and give each of you a card. Thank you. Again, we thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Next speaker is Emily Hanchett regarding Spanish immersion. Hello, I am Emily Hanchett.
Richards. I am eight years old, and I'm in third grade. I am going to be talking about Helen Keller. Buenas tardes. Mi personaje es Helen Keller. Helen Keller nació el 27 de junio en 1880, y Helen Keller murió el El, ben, el primero de junio en 1968. Helen Keller era famosa por ayudar a niños que eran ciegos y sordos en el mundo. Helen Keller aprendió un sistema llamado Braille. El sistema Braille es un sistema de lectura y escritura táctil pensado para personas ciegas. Lo creó el francés Louis Braille en el siglo XIX. Helen, yo, aprendí yo aprendí de Helen, Helen Keller que fue importante a ayudar a muchas personas. Helen Keller era creativa, inteligente y respetuosa. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Spanish immersion students had uh, this past week on Thursday, uh, and we thank Emily for that presentation. Our next speaker is um, Scott Hanchett. Good evening. Good evening. It's nice to see you all again. Thank you. First, I want to say thank you to Ms. Barnes for showing up at the Spanish immersion presentation last Friday, uh, as you saw by my daughter. That is just one represent, representative of the 150 students who currently have in Spanish immersion. I'd also like to take the opportunity to everyone who's here who's got a Spanish immersion student, parent, please stand up. We are the involved parents for Spanish immersion. As you all know, you're all educators. educators. For people in the room, involved, involved parents, parents is a very, very good indicator for the success of your of the students. And here we have here all the Spanish version parents, and we're here every month. And we will continue to be here every month, giving you the support that you need for an educational program, not just for Spanish immersion, but for all of Wilson County. We are involved parents. We care not just about Spanish immersion, but the school we're in. We are involved. We'll support you in any way we can. I understand there's a financial need for this, but I believe there are other opportunities we have not yet explored. Grants, federal monies, local businesses who might be willing to participate uh, and donate to the Wilson County Schools in support of this program or just to Wilson County Schools in general to alleviate some of the financial considerations that you are currently dealing with. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to continued discussions and the success of the Spanish Immersion. I also like to, I have another daughter, Paige, who will be a rising kindergartner, and I very much hope that she can go through fruition with Spanish Immersion herself in elementary school and further into uh, middle and high school. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hanchett. Is this Mary Lester? Coster, thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Hunter Coster. I have two children in the Spanish Immersion Program. Um, my daughter, Della Ruth Coster, was recently highlighted in one of the newspapers doing her work in second grade. And she's so proud of the work that she's doing and what she's learning in school. Um, my husband is Will Coster. He owns Coster Irrigation and employees for Hispanic speaking employees as well. So this was near and dear to our hearts. I'm a nurse and have worked in the medical community for 14 years here in Wilson at Wilson Medical Center. And I've seen firsthand how just our children can grow and learn from these opportunities that they're being given in Spanish immersion and the diversity and the culture that they're learning. And my daughter's already talking about all of the different things that she could do in the world and her dreams and aspirations, but they include speaking Spanish. And she's so passionate and so excited about that. 
I have a son that's a kindergartner in Spanish immersion and he's thriving as well. They've exceeded our expectations in English and in Spanish proficiencies. Some of you were given some data tonight earlier at the meeting preceding this meeting about the data that they are being, how they're being graded in English and in Spanish. And as you can see from that data, these students in Spanish immersion are soaring. They are doing exceptionally well, although they're learning the Spanish language 90% in kindergarten up to 70% in second grade, but they are tested in English by third grade. These children are understanding, and like the parent before us said, they are learning the context, the grammar. They are learning how to write. My children say that they can read better in English because they're learning Spanish. They understand the phonetics. My son is answering me in Spanish now when I ask him about things just to help at home. They love this program, and before I came tonight, my daughter said, Mama, please, please beg them, plead them, tell them we can help raise money. We have to keep Spanish immersion. We love this program, and if we can't have it in Wilson, tell me where I can go. She does not want to transition into an English traditional program because she's had three exceptional years now learning this culture, learning this language, gaining confidence that I would have never, ever expected. She's helped children on the playground when she's seen another child from a Hispanic family that was lost, and this was in first grade a, a year ago. She was able to help that child find its family members by speaking in the amount that she could and she could communicate with his family. She likes to showcase it at restaurants. <laughs> she likes to talk about it when we go to doctor's facilities um, for family members that are battling serious health issues right now. She sees the need in the community to speak another language and help another culture and she sees the benefit beyond her eight years that she has right now and what it will do for her life. So I just want to thank you for having this program. I beg and plead with you, as she asked me to do, to keep it, to have a plan. And I charge you to remember why you brought this to Wilson County. Other counties are trying to bring Spanish immersion in. There are wait lists in Nash County right now. Um, 19 students have already enrolled. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Natalie Hanchett. Good evening. Thank you um, for giving a few moments here to speak. Thank you, Ms. Barnes, um, for coming out on Friday. We do appreciate that. Um, my daughter, who spoke this evening, I just want to mention, did not start Spanish version until first grade. Um, and we're here in the middle of, of third grade. I'm very proud of what else she's accomplished. One thing I wanted to just mention, I was here for a meeting earlier, and um, there was a question about, uh, or it was raised about, um, why other schools talk about the three to six year commitment. So I just wanted to say, when I went to Nash County for registration, um, I did ask that exact question. I was wondering why in Wilson we did not have to sign that for my uh, for Emily, but um, but we do for or it, Nash for Paige. So they explained that the reason for that is they want to make sure parents are committed and stay in for three years, because in kindergarten and first grade they don't get much. Well, they, kindergarten they don't get any English. So they want to make sure that in second grade, when you get a little bit nervous because we're doing the testing and we're not sure how they're going to perform, that parents stick with it. Because as you can see then, when you get into third grade and your child is reading at a fifth grade level, then you know, you've know you got over that little hump and, and they only continue to grow from then to, you don't really, participate. told us, you don't really see um, how well they're doing until really fifth and sixth grade. Um, so I just want to say that was my answer to that very question. And I just want to mention that in terms of registration and enrollment, when I went to register my, my kindergartner, I was a little disheartened. I was excited about the phone call from Amber Lynch and, and from our principal. Um, I was disheartened that we went to our home school and I went into the <laughs> office. I was, not, I was handed a, a Spanish immersion form because they knew I was there for that. But I stood there longer for a while. I actually hung out for a little while to see. 
Nobody else has offered that paper. And it was a little disheartening to me because it wasn't right out there and it wasn't talked about. So I went to the media center where we had to fill out our paperwork and nobody was talking about it there either. I actually did talk to some people in that room. We got two families to sign up. One who said, oh, I heard about that last year and I wasn't even sure we could still sign up for that. So she went ahead and registered. So my concern is it's not being talked about. I asked one of the employees in that room to help and perhaps discuss it so families will know to ask for that paper. And that person specifically told me, we're not allowed to discuss it. So this was that registration like a week ago or so. And I can't, the bottom line, I can't express to enough. I mean, I'm ecstatic to hear that we've got 19 people enrolled. I think that is just amazing considering that papers were not handed out at registration. It's not talked about. Families that are not in the program do not get the robocalls. So they don't know what to do. And I think as a community, I think it's just disheartening that it is not discussed. If people don't know what to do, they're not going to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Jess Jessica Satterfield. Good evening. Thank you once again for your service and the opportunity to address you all tonight. And thank you all, again, Ms. Barnes, for attending Friday to the program. Um, I, I, too, attended the Instructional Services Committee meeting earlier this evening and listened with interest, of course, to the presentation given on Spanish immersion. I thank Dr. Wilson and her team for all of their hard work presenting you with as much data and information as possible. Later this evening, the rest of you will hear that report again, and I did want to share a few thoughts for all of you to take into consideration. Much was said about attrition since the program was begun. I would like to remind the board that since 2013, the program model has changed and the program for some students has been at three different schools. So the 44 Hearn students you will hear about were taught one way in kindergarten, one way in first grade at Hearn, then they were moved to Wells for two years, and now they are at Elm City. That's a lot for students and parents to take in in four years. Registration numbers were also mentioned. As many parents have addressed, I would argue a lack of marketing, as well as the con continuation of the program being questioned, directly affects the registration from last year. Um, a parent advisory meeting that was mentioned, or a committee or a team, would be embraced and welcomed by us as parents should the um, program continue, excuse me. I wasn't here years ago when the board voted to bring Spanish immersion. But I would make the assumption that educating students in this forward-thinking program was the goal. You will see data that shows that just that is occurring. Regardless of testing in Spanish or in English, these students are by and large outperforming, sometimes in double digits, their peers. Dr. Wilson mentioned in her classroom visits that students are learning much like their peers, with small groups, large groups, and learning charts. I would argue that that is where the similarity ends. The Spanish immersion students are also learning everything in a second language. Learning about another culture, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies in two languages. The presentation tonight is full of data, budgets, and predictions. As you consider your decision, also remember that teachers, parents, and especially the children should be a part of that decision. Should the board decide not to vote tonight, I would ask that you consider scheduling a called meeting for a vote. Many parents need to make a plan. It's the middle of March. You've already heard one family has registered their children in Nash County and she's not the only one. There are public schools in other counties that we are considering. There are private schools that have deadlines. There are schools that have lotteries and we want the best for our children. Wilson County has it right now and we want that to continue. Um, I would like to request, if I could, a copy of the presentation from tonight. My husband would like to see it. Um, and briefly, I will just share, my family was fortunate enough to go to Costa Rica on a mission trip in January. Um, and to see, to see my third grader speak in a classroom is fantastic. But to see them in a country that many miles away feel confident to make a friend on a playground to make a friend in a churchyard and to befriend the minister at the church all in their language and their culture is amazing. 
Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie Cyrus. Good evening, board members. Good evening. I have to say, first of all, that it's really not a pleasure for me to be here to the, this evening with you. Um, in fact, I've come to these school board meetings for the last 14 months, and I've tried to sit back and not say anything for many reasons. Um, and so for most of that time, I've just been quiet. But my distress about speaking stems from the deep concerns about what I have seen in these 14 months, what I've seen happening here with the Spanish Immersion Program. I'm a big proponent of SI. Um, the benefits I see it has for my daughter and her classmates, the potential impact on so many other students is absolutely phenomenal. The ability to be bilingual and bicultural and biliterate in an increasingly global society is the opportunity of a lifetime. When we moved back here three years ago, without hesitation, we signed up our daughter, and now much to our dismay, this board is considering pulling the rug out from underneath her and the other children in this program. In the last 18 months, parents have seen a steady decline in tangible support of the program. The program was relocated again last year without a clear plan for the future, even though there was a lot of complaint about not having a plan to begin with. There was no program for no no plan for evaluation or reevaluation, no sustainability, no clarity about the future, and yet it was moved. We asked many questions at that time and offered to come alongside this board and this administration to consider next steps, and yet we were pushed away and told, no, we will not meet with parents until a plan has been established. And here we are, almost a year later, still waiting on some of the answers to those very basic questions, and we've continued to be pushed away. Despite this, our students have had a very successful year with huge gains and achievements, and yet their future is again in jeopardy and being threatened. While I understand, as an educator myself, that leaders change and as such priorities, oftentimes programs change, what I had fervently hoped in moving back to Wilson County was that there was a commitment to our children first and that would not waver. The actions of the last 14 months really leave me greatly distressed and discouraged and have caused me to question that commitment to our children above all else. I never thought I'd be here, saddened by what I see as a public educator myself who started here in Wilson County, seriously considering other options for my own daughter. This is heartbreaking for me, um, and I think that there are lots of questions we need to ask ourselves about whether or not we're providing the best choice for families. And as you consider the future of Wilson County Schools and the SI program, I think there's another number we need to be thinking about. How many students who live in Wilson County are we not serving right now? How many do we lose year in and year out because we continue to eliminate innovative programs with the t potential to bring children here? Uh, we must invest in our children's future, and I don't see how we can seriously consider pulling the rug out from the children that we started this program with. Thank you very much, and I would actually appreciate a copy of the presentation as well. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth Boyd. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Boyd. Um, we moved to Wilson six years ago. And three years ago, when we entered our daughter into the Spanish Immersion Program, our older daughter was very jealous of the opportunity her younger sister was being given. Um, in a discussion that I had with several friends and family members across the country, we realized that the things that our children are exposed to in their youth influences the career paths that they will take and the way that they will reach out to the community and to the world. I truly do believe the Spanish Immersion Program is such an asset and that it is something that has kept us here in Wilson. My husband was offered different positions in other parts of the country and I fought with him to stay here 
because of this program, and I felt that it was so important for our daughter to have that. But she's not the only one, though. I know there are many children who feel the same way. And we have two more sons that are coming up into the Wilson County school system that we would also like to have this benefit. This benefit reaches so far. We can look at the future and see the way that they will be able to find careers. But right now, we have community members here that do not speak English. And doors have been opened because our daughter can speak to them. And our church, my husband serves um, as a leader, and he's unable to communicate with a third of our congregation. This is alleviated by people like my daughter, who can translate for him. But her skills are not enough to translate all the depth that there is in a church community and in a community at large. I know that she needs to continue her education. She needs to have those skills. And we are empowered here in Wilson to have that opportunity. And we are here to help you to find the ways and the means to, to provide this as a continual program, not just so our children, but so children years down the road can look forward to an opportunity to attend the Spanish Immersion Program and increase their future. Thank you. We thank each of our speakers for sharing with us at this time. Uh, the board members, you may direct the chairman to respond to the concern on behalf of the board, direct the administration to respond to the concern, refer the matter to a board committee, refer the matter to the administration, or place the matter of concern on the agenda for a future meeting. As you are well aware, this is uh, an item that is on our agenda for this evening. And so uh, I'm going to uh, ask the administration, A, to respond to each of the speakers. But we will be having the discussion that is already on tonight's agenda um, just shortly uh, in this meeting. So now we're at our committee reports. Accountability and technology, Mrs. Barnes. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the Accountability and Technology Committee meeting was held this morning at 9.30 and the members present were Mr. Mercer, Mrs. Powell, Dr. Fitch, Amber Lynch, um, Don Malloy, Dr. Mills. There was one information and discussion item on the agenda, which was the first reading of draft policy 7335, which is the employee use of social media. This new policy was issued by the North Carolina School Board Association and, and is being adopted for employee guidance while utilizing school-related social media. Uh, the administration recognizes the need for such a policy since at this point Wilson County Schools does not have one in place. This is yet another means for addressing processes and procedures for Wilson County Schools employees. The board also acknowledges that school employees may engage in social media during their personal time, but the policy reminds them and holds them accountable for their public conduct as a school system employee. Additionally, employees must comply with our existing policy, which was mentioned this morning regarding staff-student relations, uh, including our uh, employee code of ethics and standards of conduct when communicating with our students through any electronic means. The use of electronic communication is an extension of the employee's workplace, and the policy spells out the expectations while communicating with students. Employees are responsible for their content on social media, recognizing that their posts may be viewed by anyone, including the students, and shall not post confidential information concerning students, employees, or school system business. The new policy is very straightforward and must be taken seriously because the consequences uh, could include dis disciplinary action up to including dismissal. The committee this morning engaged in a lot of discussion on posting of student pictures and were told that students' last names are never used when pictures are being posted online. And if a parent doesn't want their child to have their uh, photograph online, um, their request would be honored. Uh, these were some of the highlighted items for the committee, and I'm sure that all the board members have read the policy in its entirety. 
can I ask that the chair would entertain any questions or any discussion that you might have concerning this policy? And this is the first read. Members of the board, you have heard the report coming from um, the Accountability and Technology Services Committee. As indicated, this is a first read, um, but if you have any comments that you would like to make in regard to this uh, new policy draft at this time, the chair will entertain and will entertain your uh, comments. And uh, pending legal review, uh, we offer this as a first read and it will come back to us at the next board meeting. Madam Chair. That does end my report. There's no discussion and look forward to the second reading. Okay. Uh, administrative services, Mrs. Boyette, in the place of Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Chair, um, members of the board. The Administrative Services Committee did meet today, and Mr. Mercer asked me to present tonight. Mr. Mercer attended along with Ms. Flynn, uh, myself, Dr. Fitch, Dr. Mills, Ms. Evans, and um, Mr. William Davis. We have one information item to talk about. It's the Wilson Area Student-Based Health Clinic, which is known as WASH. We did an addendum uh, to the memorandum of, under, of understanding. Um, the addendum adds um, and includes the new clinic that is to uh, be at Bedding Field. Um, so the uh, memorandum of understanding is for Beddingfield and Forest Hills. We don't know what the one at Beddingfield is going to be called yet because it hasn't been known. Uh, we did have discussion on spelling out in the memorandum of understanding that Watt would also be served and have access to the clinic as well as which calendar was going to be followed at that clinic. So um, there are some things that need to be updated in on that, but it's just information. Okay. Any, uh, any other um, additions that members who were in attendance uh, or comments that you, you choose to make? Thank you. So you have action items. Yes, under action items, we have budget amendments. Um, there's amendment 105, which is the state public school fund. Uh, it represents changes made due to the allotment revision forms received from DPI and the ABC transfer of the textbook permits. Any questions? For the state? Okay, Amendment 202 is the current expense fund and it reflects the budgeting of excess fines and forfeitures and interest received and the budget alignments. Any questions on 202? Okay. Amendment 305 is the federal fund and it represents the budgeting of various federal programs. Amendment 601 is the Trust and Agency Fund, and it reflects the adjustment of carryover to the audit report and the budgeting of interest. <laughs> Amendment 805, the Local Special Revenue Fund, represents the budgeting of our various grants and programs. Questions, Mr. Chairman? Then, um, on behalf of the Administrative Services Committee, I move that we approve the uh, budget amendments 105, 202, 305, 601, and 805. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the 2017-2018 budget amendments 105, 202, 305, 601, and 805. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. <coughs> All in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Um, 
Next on the agenda is the instructional services item. And um, we had two info uh, services committee report, I'm sorry. We had two uh, informational items and we had um, two action items. The first uh, instructional informational item is the summer reading camp. Um, at the last board meeting, we did receive information on the reading camp um, preliminary plans. Um, an update was provided um, by Dr. Wilson to the committee. Um, as you noted, we will be having two summer reading sites, one at Benson Bynum and the other at New Hope um, this year. Um, we talked about um, the budgeting and the staffing for that, and we talked about uh, having an open house for the reading camp. The proposal was put forward um, of a date of July the 6th with the summer reading camp starting on July 9th. The suggestion was made that we have a second uh, informational open house more towards the end of the regular academic year um, to give parents more uh, information and opportunity. Uh, also, we ask the uh, staff to make sure that a frequently asked questions sheet is made available, that it be um, not only posted on the system website, but also uh, sent to the public libraries because some families do use the uh, computers at the libraries in order to access um, the technology information. Um, the second was uh, School Athletics at Wilson Academy of Applied Technology. Uh, when we initially started the early colleges, the students at WECA were informed that there would not be an opportunity to participate in sports. Um, but as Watt was developed, students were informed that they would have an opportunity to um, participate in sports. But now due to the nature of the classes and the timing with it following um, the same time schedule as um, WECA, it has been looked at and uh, discussed as to whether or not the students would be able to continue in their sports activities. Uh, Dr. Wilson presented us with a uh, informational sheet that talked about uh, <coughs> the students who would and the sports that still the students could participate in, uh, given the time constraints of their schedule and some of the sports that they would not be able to participate in. Um, Mr. Farmer raised several questions about travel, um, about practices, about preparation for games, particularly when the students um, are in class to five o'clock and whether or not they would have um, sufficient time for the, the warm-ups and the um, required dress out in, in particular. And so we have asked uh, Dr. Wilson and committee to go back and to uh, continue uh, exploration on the issue of um, those students at Watt being um, allowed to continue in their athletic endeavors um, in indicating that there would be a change so that incoming students um, would not have that option but for allowing the students who had already started at Watt and already engaged in at, uh, athletics to be able to continue. So we await that report. The two action items, um, one was a proficiency summer school for science. At the last board meeting, we looked at uh, our proficiency summer school for uh, reading, for math, and, uh, but there was not a request for science. And the principals have asked that we include um, proficiency summer school in the area of science. Therefore, as chair of that committee, I move that the uh, 
there was a recommend a recommendation from the committee and therefore a motion that we approve adding science as a proficiency summer school uh, offering uh, this summer along with the other proficiency summer uh, school offerings. So I place that as a motion and we entertain a second. I second. Since the vice chair is not here. Um, so it has been moved and properly seconded that the uh, we approve adding a proficiency summer school in the area of science as requested by the administration. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. Aye. And those opposed, the sign of nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. So we will be adding proficiency summer school for students. The second action item is the Spanish Immersion Program. Um, we had five members of the board who were, who were in attendance at the meeting this afternoon. Uh, I asked Dr. Wilson if she would do the presentation that was provided. Uh, Mrs. Flynn did not have the opportunity. Mr. Mercer um, had gone home ill by that time, and he's still not here, so we'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one with him, with um, Dr. Wilson. But um, in order to uh, put more information to the public, I've asked her to please go over the Spanish Immersion um, PowerPoint presentation that she gave. She may abbreviate it in some short way, but keep the facts pertinent. And so I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Dr. Wilson, at this time. And we're happy to see that you have water. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. So um, the first slide that I'll share with you is just a, a brief outlook of how we prepared the presentation. And when I say we, it was a team. I had Miss um, Melissa Eddy, Miss Lindsay Folks. Ms. Deborah Simons and Ms. Claudia Spencer um, participate and um, as a focus team for this. And you see the bulleted areas. The areas that you see listed there are the items that you gave as direction um, at the last board meeting. So then the first thing that we did was that we met with um, two representatives from Participate, as well as we had um, a few phone call visits um, and these are some of the conversations that we talked about um, you will see that we talked about the program structure the professional development they provided a funding analysis um, budget projections marketing staffing records some research capacity to maximize and sustain the program as well as a plan to phase out if that is what it, the board decides to do this is a brief outline of where we currently are in Wilson County Schools, and we offer full immersion. In the discussion with Participate, um, they shared a possible program structure change that could um, potentially work with our current um, new students that will be added in kindergarten, our current kindergarten students, our first grade, but certainly our numbers are not to the point to where in our second through fourth grade that it would be advantageous. We did review with three other districts based on your request. These are the names of the three districts that we um, discussed. Primarily, um, there are some points that we can go over and, and they're in your PowerPoint, but two of the points that were really different from um, from where we are in Wilson County Schools is that the students are assessed in English and in Spanish. Um, currently in Wilson County Schools, the students are assessed in first kindergarten and first grade in Spanish and then second through fourth grade in English. Um, these three districts are um, planning to do the assessment in both. And when I say planning, because Nash Rocky Mountain is brand new in theirs, and that's part of the slide as well. The other difference happens to deal with the funding, and all three of the districts were reported um, back that they use state and local funding. And so again, these are the, the breakouts of Nash Rocky Mount. Um, 
This is a brand new program. They only have kindergartners enrolled in the three schools that you see there. They have a five-year commitment, um, excuse me, a five-year implementation and a three-year commitment form. This is how the program is broken out. It is structured very similar as far as kindergarten and first grade, like we are here in Wilson County Schools, and then it decreases in the Spanish um, and increases in the English as the time goes by. Johnston County Schools um, has more of the um, seasoned, such as Selma Elementary. Their program began in 2007, um, and pretty much the same thing as far as um, how they are broken out in kindergarten through fourth grade. Fifth grade is not listed here because fifth grade is not at the school. This one talks about Selma and the asterisk there is because typically you have new students who are added in the um, kindergarten and first grade, but at Selma they add the students um, sprinkling in those students at the second grade level as well. Then in Edgecombe County, um, again, very similar in nature to where the um, Spanish and the English um, instruction. This particular slide talks about the General Assembly and the Department of Public Instruction. Um, the General Assembly provides a stat the two statutes, one on the budget flexibility um, with the um, conversion and then the class size waiver. Students who are participating in the Spanish immersion, we do not have to follow the um, class size requirements that they have said that we, other schools and other classrooms have to. You'll see the DPI resources that are available, um, but at no point do the um, DPI staff come to monitor or to evaluate Spanish immersion. The evaluation for Spanish immersion is left to the vendor, which is participate. Um, you'll see that we did take in consideration the survey feedback, and these are the bulleted points for this feedback. You'll also see those same type bulleted points for the parent input. And again, I think the same thing is for tonight. We did visit the classrooms. Um, and the classrooms are very similar and, and when I was talking about they were similar is that they are similar in nature is that kids are having fun and they're learning um, and the things that I see um, in the classroom. Yes, that the Spanish is different, um, they're learning in a different language and as I went to the older classrooms they were speaking in, in two, two languages. The funding. That was one of the conversations that you have uh, asked me about the funding. Um, currently, all as I said earlier, the three um, <coughs> districts, it was reported that, you know, are they questioned, are they using Title I funds? I think that was one of the questions that you asked me to try to find out. And based on what we found out, that they are not using federal funds. They are using state and local funds. Um, just like Elm City Elementary is a Title I school. And as a Title I school, it drops below the threshold, or excuse me, it is above the threshold of the 40%. And so Elm City Elementary receives Title I funding. Whereas the students who are currently in the Spanish Immersion Program would drop below the threshold of the 40%. So they are not eligible for the Title I funding as it currently, the current students. That doesn't mean that the students who are new to kindergarten in the upcoming year, if those students are enrolled, if they are in the poverty ban and in that poverty threshold, does not mean that you could not start and pay for Title I funds, um, that program with Title I funds. But recognize that if, if the student population is at like 42%, 50%, whatever, and students drop out, then you could not be paying for that particular program. It's very similar to our pre-K program. Just because our pre-K program is located in a school 
that is a Title I school doesn't mean 100% that Title I can pay for that. It has to stay above that 40% threshold. Um, as far as um, fundraising, it's certainly, and grants are certainly allowable, um, but it is recommended that that fundraising and any grant money to be in a line item connected to the local funds. Um, so that it, if the, it can be tracked. Then the next um, slide happens to be about the current marketing that we've used. Um, those are the suggestions that have been provided to us from other districts, um, as well as what has used in the past. And then this is the historical enrollment. We have, um, currently we have six students that are in the fourth grade. We have 33 students that are in the third grade. And um, as you can see, these students have gone to three different schools. That is correct. We have 32 students in the second grade. Um, we have 28 that were in the first grade. You'll notice that there were two students added to first grade um, in 17-18. In kindergarten, we currently have 17 students um, due to various reasons. Um, three students have exited the program. So overall, 228 students have entered the program, 111 have exited, 117 students remain at 51%. Um, so a little bit of information about the academic performance that you requested also. And so I'm going to go through this. You've got the information that you have in your packet. Um, this is 1617, so this is a little bit last year's data. This is for first grade and second grade. That TRC, that means text reading comprehension. And again, second grade is the first year that they are assessed in English. Kindergarten and first grade, they were assessed in Spanish. 90% of their instruction was in Spanish, so they were assessed in Spanish. In third grade, they were assessed in English. In second grade, again in English. This is their math data from last year. Now, this is the start of 2017-2018 for kindergarten. <clears throat> In first grade, we have it broken down. You'll notice that the traditional teacher um, has only seven. That happens also in the Spanish immersion because this is a combination class. So when you had 11 where there was kindergarten and then the next slide is seven because that's a K-1 combination. So I discussed earlier that I left the kind of data off so that we could protect those lower numbers, any numbers that were below uh, 10. And second grade, um, you see that you have two Spanish immersion teachers. In third grade, and then this is the middle of the year um, for the math in second grade and the middle of the year ELA and then the math. And again, here we have only six students that are in the Spanish immersion class um, for fourth grade, and then the math. Um, however, just so you know that the, the results there are somewhat indicative of what it would be across not only at Elm City, but also across the district. So this is um, the information that a little bit, I think, where, why I'm presenting this again this evening um, is the sustainability plan. And so the board requested that I share some information. And so I have a one-year plan with our current kindergartners to fourth grade students, <coughs> our four-year plan with our current kindergartners to fourth grade. A six-year plan would mean that we would add a kindergarten class and keep those kids in Spanish immersion for six years, kindergarten through fifth grade, and then offer what would be a high school pathway. 
The first one I'm going to share is the six-year plan. And so here, this is how it would look over six years. The part that you see that's in the gray, that part is not paid for by Wilson County Schools. That would be the cost approximately of what participate would have to be um, paying for those teachers. At the bottom where it says the total, the numbers that I have added together are the two English literacy teachers and the one teacher assistant with their benefits and their supplement. Um, and that's how I got that number, such as in 1819, $247,602. And it, it goes across for the next five years afterwards. So I took that number, and there's, you're going to see the addition of all of those on another slide. Another consideration is the transportation budget. So you have, they're riding about 49 and a half miles a day. Um, the cost of miles. I did not know exactly how much the cost per mile would be because as gasoline prices go up and down, drivers I used, um, the driver cost was about $12 an hour, depending on who actually drives. I just used an average. So that amount will show up again, the $226,206. It shows up on this. So those five numbers that were added at the very bottom row equals $1,761,649. And again, that is not including the salaries of any participate teachers. That's just the two literacy teachers and the TA, and then all of the benefits and such that they would um, incur. The participate fees are added together across the, over the six years. Um, currently the fee is four, 46300 The fee does increase after two years to $49,000. Um, the supplies and materials, $15,000 a year equals $90,000 over six years. Contracted services, $5,000 a year. Think of that as $30,000. The transportation cost you just saw earlier on another slide, so that's $2,403,655. Over a six year period. So now the one year plan with a current kindergartner to fourth grade students. These are where, if the students were to um, just move from kindergarten and then the first, and the first grade go to second, and second go to third, and so forth, we would need five um, <coughs> teachers paid for by participate. So that's where you get those ones and those five ones. We would need to have the two English literacy teachers and then the TA for the first grade because there wouldn't be a kindergarten. So there's a total of eight positions. Three of those positions would be uh, Wilson County Schools would be responsible for. Again, this is a similar chart to where that those five teachers up there at the top are paid for by participate um, and what the cost would be. The $247,450 in the far right um, column row is that that would be the three individuals for the next 18-19 year. This is the transportation budget. <coughs> and so then the um, same summary. So I took that staffing cost the participate fees, um, supplies and materials, contracted services, transportation costs. The um, amount would be approximately $351,624. So then the question was asked, what would it look like if it was going to be phased out? So what would it be if these students were, um, we had a four-year plan to where we would add kindergarten and then phase that out. So you would see here that we would need to have the teachers. So the 18-19 would be next year, so six teachers, then we'd be down to five teachers, then we'd be down to four, then two, and then one. And you, you also see the, how the literacy teachers also are changing and the TAs are changing as well. So again, 
um, you ask for a four-year plan. The far right column is um, an additional year, and I did put that in gray there um, so that you could see that because we would still have some, even if we ended in 21-22, we would still have that group of fourth graders who would still be like wanting. So just that's just like an extra tidbit of information for you. You didn't ask for that, but I was just trying to provide that for you. You see how the literacy teachers are changing from two to one, and then the TA is phased out. Um, the numbers that you see in the very bottom row, um, I took the four, they have an asterisk there. You'll see that on the upcoming slide. This would be the budget over that four year period. And then this is the summary. So that asterisk does not include that fifth year that I added on. I was just trying to keep it to what you would ask, but give a little bit more information. Participate had said that on their document that um, no fees if we're going to plan to phase it out. Um, they, uh, Mr. Smith shared that document with me last week. Um, supplies and materials, contracted services, transportation costs. So over four years, it would be $918,374. So then another question was asked about the middle school pathway. Um, so this was what it would somewhat look like based on some conversations with other school districts and how they handle the middle school and the cost of the teachers as for each of those years. And again, I didn't say this earlier, but I do need to say it is that, I mean, I did say it in the earlier committee meeting, is that the figures that I have is based on my consultation with um, Ms. Evans um, in finance so that I could get some kind of adjustment. I didn't just pull these numbers out of my head. Uh, I, I did some 6% and then she would tell me this is 7.65 and then 18.44 for retirement. So she gave me some figures for me to go through um, to base this. This is a do document that was shared at the last um, board meeting. There was a question based on the parent survey, based on um, um, public input about the $208,407.30. I want to be very clear on what that actually looks like. That includes those two fees that you see there in the yellow that, um, that Participate takes care of. The part that is green um, is a relocation loan. Two is paid to Participate. And then the teachers are actually going to be paying Wilson County Schools back um, when you look at the um, purchase order, though, it does say 12000 And again, the information that is here is all about the Spanish immersion at Elm City Elementary. So some of the purchase orders include the other teacher that is at Hunt High School. So this is the budget analysis for 2017-2018. So we have an allotment. Um, that based on that general statute that there are eight teachers we actually get um, $64,558 is that we can convert and then that money goes to participate to convert that so when we say eight positions then participate gets sixty four thousand five hundred fifty eight for those eight positions and again it's nine but one's at high hunt so then from that amount of money that five hundred sixteen thousand four hundred sixty four dollars participate has to pay for other fees outside of that so they subtract that out such as the teacher administration fee or the handling fee that's to take care of their visas, to keep them here in the um, United States. As well as FICA, that's Social Security for teachers who are here at least 18 months. So it has to be paid. Um, so when we subtract all of that, then we have a balance of 44,334. Now on participates documents is a little bit more, but again, they're using the Hunt High School person to add that up. Um, I thought we needed to stick with the Spanish immersion um, numbers. Um, 
For participate fee is $46,300, whether we have eight people or nine people, so I couldn't divide it up for that way. And that's eight positions for 117 students, which gives us a balance, a negative balance when you subtract that out, of $1,966. So from that, Wilson County Schools does have to pay for additional staff. Um, an English literacy teacher, a TA, their salary and benefits. It's approximately $198,518. And then the supplies, the materials, and the transportation costs. So overall, it's $258,358. One of the questions that was asked of, was about the eight teachers. So if you think about um, Wilson County Schools has 528 teachers. That's what we might be allotted state positions, not, not paid by local, not paid by federal state positions. So to have the, state, the Spanish immersion, and we're going to have eight teachers, then those eight teachers come off the top right there. And so that means that we are not allocating those teachers in other locations. Um, and what would that look like if they were? This is what the next slide looks like. That particular slide actually shows what would happen if the students were re to return to their base schools. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of information. Some of the school, some of the numbers are rather low, um, like in Barnes. And so you have the one in second grade would go to third grade next year. That particular number is not going to make a difference as far as um, based on their current second graders in power school, adding that one is not going to cause for another teacher. However, if you look at Elm City Elementary, when those students are, if they are funneled back in to the traditional schools, there's a possibility of at least one teacher. Um, because one kindergartner, that one kindergartner moving in, will not affect the numbers. However, when you look at the first grade, you have eight students. Moving to second will require an additional teacher, possibly making three classes of 19. Again, based on their traditional, what's in power school, then we would add one teacher there. There would not be a need for an additional third grade teacher. You see that eight, that same number eight is on second grade. But if you funnel those same eight students into the traditional schools, they will still fit within the house bill um, requirements for class size. Um, then you also look over here at Wales. Let's look at those numbers. When you see that, um, like in 11 in kindergarten. There, there's not going to be a need for a first grade teacher, even though that 11, it sounds like, well, 11 students are going back into um, Wells. There would not be a need for a first grade teacher um, because the class size averages would be about 21 per class. So no additional teacher for second grade either. Um, and again, the only other one where there would be a possible teacher would be at New Hope, even though that there's, their numbers are low. That's sending the students back to New Hope as a result of um, eliminating Spanish immersion would not cause that. That's going to have to probably happen just based on their current numbers anyway. Um, and so again, you're looking at 528 if we take eight teachers off the top for Spanish immersion, or 528, and then we would have to add one to two more teachers um, based on how students are situated. Now that was a very condensed version. <laughs> I hope it was understanding. But still got all the information in. Thank you. Um, Members of the board, discussion, questions, comments?
Mrs. Schwab. Um, that's a lot of information, and I think with a lot of the different scenarios of what we can do, I think that's a lot to digest, and I think we need to look a little further into it before we make a quick decision. So this is an action item, so what is the pleasure of the board? Is this a continuation? Is this, where do we, where do we go from here? We have tasked uh, Dr. Wilson, she has presented the information, so now we are at the crossroads where um, we need to... Madam Chairman. Mr. Palmer. I saw this for the first time three hours ago. This was an abbreviated version. We went an hour and a half and we had tons of questions then, so I've got a litany of questions now. I move that we continue this, and I hate to kick the can down the road, but I move that we continue this discussion so we can get some of these answers. And also, Mr. Mercer is not here, and he needs to be a part of this discussion also. That was a motion. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we continue this discussion before a final decision is made. So we will add this to our agenda. I'm Need sorry. a vote. I'm sorry. It has been moved and properly seconded that we uh, continue this discussion on the Spanish immersion program. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. We will continue this discussion. Thank you very much. Um, Human Resource Committee, um, Mr. Farmer, uh, you have uh, a second read for policy 7410 on teacher contracts. Madam Chairman, we did not meet today because we had a lengthy discussion in instruction services. Therefore, I have no recommendations, and I would appreciate you taking um, this topic, policy 7410, teacher contracts, and uh, we have that presentation now, and we put it to All right. a vote. Um, Dr. Mills. Um, this is the topic that has been brought to us um, a couple of months ago, and uh, I believe it is the recommendation of the administration, and we had four options that were presented to us for consideration, and I believe that um, administration is now recommending option two to replace Wilson County Schools Policy 3120, Professional uh, Personnel Compensation and Contracts, is that not correct? That's correct. All right. Can you add any further insight as, um, as we move, move forward with this and, um, and then entertain a motion? Oh, there's no real changes. I would ask Mr. Davis to, to go through what option two is again for everyone. Yeah, and uh, as we shared at the last board, board meeting, uh, option two is basically um, all teachers who are under three years, um, it's one, 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 and then they go right into a, a, a two-year contract after uh, three successful years, and then after that, a four-year contract. So option two is basically one, 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 two, four. Okay. Any comments or discussion? The chair will entertain a motion. Chair. Mrs. Collins. I move that we approve the recommendation of the administration to replace Wilson County Schools Policy 3120 for personnel compensation and contracts with policy 7410 teacher contracts option two. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we replace Wilson County Schools Policy 3120 professional personnel compensation and contract with policy 7410 teacher contracts option two and that that should say in the form presented 
because that has a couple of other changes as well in section E. I make that motion with the forms. In the form presented. In the form that it was presented. And it's the second. Okay. All right. So uh, is there any further discussion? Who was the second? The second one was Mrs. Bush. Go ahead. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. Mr. Palmer? Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. I move Wilson County Board of Education go into closed session to consent a confidential personal matter be provided in North County Jewish Bank. 143 3 18.11 and 16 and 15 C that is 319 through 321 at the consultant the Board of Education Attorney. Preserve the attorney client privilege as provided in North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 A3. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the Wilson County Board of Education go into closed session to consider confidential personnel matters as provided in North Carolina General Statute. 143-318.11A1 and 6, and 115C-319-321, and to consult with the Board of Education Attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege as provided in North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11A3. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Let the record reflect that the motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned to closed session.